six undervalued dividend stocks. We're going to run through every single one of these. We're going to look at their historical performance. We're going to take a look at their dividend safety, looking at their financial metrics to support whether or not they are a buy now. We're going to take a look and put them through our valuation model, getting to our intrinsic value and our acceptable buy price given our investor margin of safety, as well as seeing what kind of upside Wall Street are looking at over the next 12 months. Now, let's jump straight in and I will also discuss my own strategy for each one of these companies, some of which I am buying, some of which I am looking to add. Now, the Hershey Company 2023, they were down around 15%. We can see them pretty much trading towards their 52-week lows. They offer a yield now of 2.5% and a forward PE of 20 now, if you've been holding Hershey over the last 10 years, you'd be up around 94%. Now, remember, it doesn't include those dividends reinvested, and we can see their all-time high at around $275 last year. And we can see they have dropped significantly in price due to the increase in the cocoa prices, which affects their margins. However, it does look to be like that is not only baked into the share price, but also looks to be leveling off and their prices reducing. Dividend safety then 93, it is very safe. Market cap 39 billion, a large cap company. When we look at the recessionary metrics for those that see a recession inbound, they maintained the dividend during the last recession. Above average growth, pretty much flat. Remember the S&P 500 had around negative 12% growth during that period. And they outperformed the S&P with a negative 30% recession return versus the S&P's negative 55 Dividend growth, lots to love here as a dividend growth investor. 15% increase just last year, 9% on average over the last five years, 10% on average over the last 20 years. Well above that 4% I always advocate on the channel to keep up with just to be in line with inflation. They have also been increasing those dividends for the last 13 years. And on top of that, they have been paying dividends for 93 years without a reduction. As always, dividend yield theory states the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average. 2.5 versus 2.03, so we have our first sign of undervaluation. Although, do bear in mind we're not looking at any of these in isolation and we'll draw our conclusions towards the end. Forward PE, 19.6 versus the five-year average of 24.3, another sign of undervaluation. And we can see the Hershey PE is pretty much bang in line with the consumer staples of 19.6. As always, do ignore the earnings payout. It is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. One quick example, 2014, 96%. 2014, 51%. This shows that for Hershey in 2014, management were paying nearly as much out in dividends that they were generating in free cash flow. Anyway, moving on, my personal preference below 60%. It shows that management can offer those double-digit dividend increases. 2022 at 44%, 2023, 54%. So we can see that when the annual report comes out for 2023, it is still below 60%. So I do expect this year for another double digit dividend increase. Free cash flow per share, 375, 2022, 880, although 2023 is expected to drop slightly. Remember the cocoa prices did rise last year. So it isn't too bad. Still, it is moving in the right direction and it has more than doubled, although do note the inconsistencies from year to year. Sales growth 3 to 7%. Remember, steady, moderate growth. What we can see, in fact, over the last two years and expected in 2023, double digit increase to the top line. Very, very positive. And numerically speaking, we can see the top line going from 7 billion in 2013 to expected 11 billion in 2023. On top of those dividend increases that we like, they do share buybacks, returning excess cash to investors, 227 million shares to 207. So over the last 10 years, they have bought back around 10% of those outstanding shares, around 20 million worth. ROIC, a regular metric that I look for in companies I invest in, 10% or more. The reason for this, it gives me personal faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. And I do love the consistency we've seen over the last six years, 27% in 2023, very positive to note. Operating margin, free cash flow margin, very consistent, well above the 16, 23 in fact in 2023. And the free cash flow margin of 15% in 2023 is looking very strong in my personal opinion. 
Now, net debt to EBITDA, for those that are new to the channel, it stands for Earnings Before Interest, Tax, Depreciation, Amortization. And this metric shows us two things, the balance sheet strength as well as the dividend safety. These are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Maximum for 2023, 1.51. Very, very positive. This is a very strong indicator that the company not only has a safe dividend, but the balance sheet is very strong. So let's jump into the valuation of Hershey Company. As always, if you're not a regular viewer on the channel, we do run through every single one of these models to get to the intrinsic value. For today's episode, we're jumping straight into the calculation. Now, the intrinsic value for Hershey today is the average of the three models that you see. And the current price is around $191. So margin of safety, as always, we start off with 10% if we believe it has a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. If we move to 15%, it's a buy up to 203 at 20% pretty much a dollar shy of the current trading price. So we see around a 20% margin of safety for the Hershey company. Now, what about Wall Street? Well, they forecast the price over the next 12 months to around $225 with around 18% upside. So in conclusion for Hershey, we see 20% margin of safety with Wall Street sensing on 18% upside. Now, personally, this is one that I have discussed on the channel. It is one that I was adding towards its 52-week lows, and I will continue to add if it is around this level. I do believe for 2024 and beyond, this is looking like a very undervalued price. I do believe those cocoa prices will start to come down even further, and Hershey will start to reclaim those strong margins. And this is one that I would say has one of the best chances for some very strong upside. As we can see, Wall Street are effectively saying around 18%. Moving on to company number two, then we have Exxon Mobile Corporation. Again, one we have discussed. It is sub $100 currently, as we can see. It is down around 12% over the last year. And we can see here a forward PE of 10.76 and a yield of just under 4%. Now, over the last 10 years, you would be down around half a percent. Again, although it doesn't include those dividends reinvested, it does say that this isn't one that would have had a great return on investment if you did buy exactly 10 years ago today. So let's take a look at the metrics. Well, dividend safety, 80, it is safe. Market cap, just under 400 billion, a mega cap company. Now, recessionary metrics, as always, they increased during the last recession below average growth, but actually outperformed the S&P negative 28% return. So dividend growth, whilst we advocate around 4% to keep up in line with inflation, they did give a 4.4% increase in October last year. Not the worst, not the best. You are at least getting a yield of around 4% with an increase in line with inflation. Last five years, just under inflation. Last 20 years, 7%. So in terms of the dividend, it isn't bad. Not the best, as I mentioned, but also not the worst. They are a dividend aristocrat, having increased those dividends for the last 25 years or more. And we can see they have also been paying dividends for 141 years without a reduction. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, we can see here a sign of overvaluation with the current yield below that five-year average. But as always, we're not looking at any of these models in isolation. And the forward P, 11.8, below the five-year average of 12.2 and pretty much in line with the energy sector P of 12.2. So let's take a look at that free cash flow payout. As we can see, 2021-2022 below 60%, 23 at 39%, 2024 expected 54 So I would like to see a high single-digit increase from Exxon Mobil's dividend this year. Free cash flow per share, well, 254 in 2013, 1390 in 2022. So it is increasing. But again, one thing to note that inconsistency as well as the drop expected in 2023's annual report when it is released. Now, this should come as no surprise given the industry. Oil and gas is very cyclical, hence the years or many years of negative growth followed by positive growth and so on. And this is just very cyclical. And when we look at that numerically, we can see that in greater detail. 390 billion to 402, 2023 expected to drop down further. Now they've done share buybacks, they've also issued shares diluting your position as a shareholder, but over the course of the last 10 years, the net position is around 200 million worth of shares bought back, around 5% of the total shares outstanding. So not too bad, pretty decent. ROIC then, the last few years, very positive, 2023 at 23%, but given this is cyclical, if you are investing, in cyclical industries and businesses, it is worth keeping an eye on these figures as you don't want to be buying these at the top of cycles. 
Operating margin the last few years, very positive around that 12% as a minimum. Likewise, on the free cash flow, the last three years have been very positive for Exxon Mobil Corporation. Net debt to EBITDA, then 2022 at 0.2, 2023 expected 0.15. Phenomenal balance sheet. They do hold a lot of cash, and we can see that debt position in comparison isn't too bad. So that dividend does remain to be safe at the moment. So let's jump into the valuation. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed the content or enjoying it, smash the like button, hit the subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So margin of safety, let's start off 10%. It is a buy up to 116, 15% up to 109. 20% up to 103 and at 25% it isn't too far off but right now you are getting around a 20% margin of safety. Now in terms of Wall Street and what they forecast well they do sense around a 29% upside over the next 12 months going up to $129. Now oil and gas isn't one that I do hold in my portfolio. I do hold ETFs that are covered through the oil and gas industry but this is one where if it does start to come down further i will be looking to take advantage at around a 25 to 30 percent margin of safety so between 90 to 95 dollars this is one that i will add to my position as i do believe as we saw it has been paying the dividend for a very very long time and even though those dividend increases may look mediocre in line with inflation once the interest rates start to cut these will start to be a lot more lucrative given that interest rates keeping money in banks will only be offering a very, very low essential rate. Moving on to company number three, we have PepsiCo. Now they're down around 5% over the last year. They do offer a yield now of just over 3% with a forward PE of around 22. Now, if you've been holding PepsiCo over the last 10 years, you would be up around 103% and we can see their all-time high at around $196, just under 200. Now, dividend safety, 93, it is very safe. We'll discuss this very shortly. Market cap, 233 billion mega cap company now increase the dividend during the last recession pretty much flat sales and also outform the s p with the negative 35 percent recession return very very nice to see a double digit increase last year in february so we are expecting an increase in the next few weeks last five years seven percent very positive last 20 years 11 percent again lots to love about this in terms of dividend growth and lo and behold they are a dividend king they have been increasing those dividends for the last 50 years so let's jump into dividend yield theory and we can see that sign of undervaluation 3.03 versus 2.83 and the forward p of 20.9 versus the five-year average of 24 and when we look at the consumer staples pepsi is not too far off at 20.9 so let's look at the free cash flow payout. Now, this is something that has worried me when we have been reviewing PepsiCo. Now, their free cash flow is very high. And again, this is a reason why we tend to ignore earnings. Look at that 2022, 67%. 2022 in the free cash flow, it's showing that management are paying out more in dividends than they generated in free cash flow. Now, 2023 is expected to come down lower to 96%. That is still a worry, a red flag for me. 2024 come down to 74 percent which i can live with now this is something that i would just keep an eye on you don't want a company to continue to be paying out more in dividends than they generate in free cash flow nonetheless it is still a solid company as we are going to get on 447 in free cash flow per share 406 in 2022 we can see it is very inconsistent 2023 expected to increase from the prior year 2024 expected to go even higher Sales growth then, 3 to 7% is the minimum, but over the last four to five years, looking very positive. We do in fact see even two years of the last three at double digit growth. So very nice to see as investors. And numerically speaking, it's gone from around 66 billion to 92 expected in 2023. Shares outstanding, they're also doing share buybacks, 1.56 billion to 1.39. So that is an added bonus for investors. And ROIC, lots to love here. Not only is it above 10%, but it is consistently around that 20% mark. And 20% is what is expected in 2023. So it gives me faith in management. And that is a tick when I'm looking at analyzing that part of a company. Operating margin, pretty much around that 16% consistently. Free cash flow margin, it has started to come down from the highs we saw in 2015. But it is still around that 7% minimum that I do look for. So again, something I can live with. But there are a few things just to bear in mind when you are investing or looking to invest in this company. 
Net debt to EBITDA looking positive, 1.95 expected in 2023, 1.8 in 2024, and that is below the four. So we can see that dividend does look to be safe. Yes, there are concerns on that free cash flow payout, but overall, there are no real worries for the time being. Let's take a look at the valuation of PepsiCo. And as always, you can click on the pinned comment below to grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or even those on your watch list. So margin of safety then, let's start off with 10%. We can see it is pretty much around that current trading price, a few dollars shy. So for PepsiCo, we do see it around that 10% margin of safety. In terms of Wall Street and what they forecast, well, they see around 14% upside to around $190 over the next 12 months, not even peaking at the 52 highs we saw of around 196, 197. Now, personally, PepsiCo is a company that I would like to add to the portfolio. They have a wide range of brands that I'm sure everyone knows about, not just in the beverages industry, but it is one that I would like a slightly higher margin of safety, anywhere between 15 to 20 percent, so around the 150 to 160 level. It is on the watch list and I am keeping a close eye on it. As always, though, do let me know your thoughts so far on any of these companies if you have been adding or are looking to add them to your portfolio. Moving on to the next company, then we have General Mills. Now, this isn't too far off that 52 week low, down 23% over the last year, forward PE of 14 and a yield of around 3.74%. Now, if you've been investing in this over the last 10 years, you'd be up around 31%. And we can see whilst that isn't great, they did have an all time high at around $89, $90, as we can see in the summer of last year. So let's take a look. That dividend remains to be very safe, a score of 90, market cap 36 billion, a large cap company. Now, those recessionary metrics, they increased the dividend during the last recession, pretty much flat growth, but above average, and a very, very strong recession return, significantly outperforming the S&P with a negative 12% return versus that S&P's negative 55. A very nice dividend increase as well just last summer, 9.3%. Last five years, a bit of a shame, down 2%, not something you really want to see below inflation. But over the last 20 years, at 7% isn't too bad. So they have only been increasing those dividends for the last three years. As we can see from the graph above, they did maintain it for quite some time. But on the plus side, they have been holding those dividends for the last 125 years without a reduction. So a very strong feat, essentially roughly similar to ExxonMobil that we just reviewed. Now, we can see that sign of undervaluation, 3.72 versus 3.32, as well as that forward P of 14 versus 16.6. And when we compare it, it is sitting significantly lower than the consumer staples of 19.6. So in terms of the essential free cash flow payout, pretty much below 60% for the majority of the last 10 years, although 2023 at 61%. We do expect 52 or thereabouts in 2024. So personally, no real worries so far with that dividend. And we can see why it remains to be very safe. $3 in 2014 free cash flow per share, $3.51 in 2023. So it hasn't been the fastest growing. It is a grow some years and negative growth. So again, just the consistency isn't what we want. But that isn't an issue. You just need to understand what kind of companies you're investing in to have realistic expectations. Sales growth, well, from 2018, it hasn't been too bad within those 3 to 7% targets we look for as a minimum. 2023 at 6% is fairly positive. So numerically speaking, 18 billion to 20 billion. And we can see here how inconsistent they have been over that period. And inconsistency, again, can be used. They have done share buybacks as well as essentially issuing shares. But the net position is they have bought back around 45 million shares over the last 10 years, around 8% of their shares outstanding from 2014. So that is a positive for investors. ROIC, again, very consistently around that 10 to 15% with 2023 at 13%. So that is a positive in my opinion. And the margins, it is very positive to note that it is around that 16% level or plus, especially for the consumer staples industry, where we do analyze a lot of companies that do tend to struggle on this margin and the same can be said very very nice consistent positive free cash flow margin 11% in 2023 net debt to EBITDA then 2.8 in 2023 we can see why that essential dividend is very safe alongside that free cash flow payout and it does seem to have a fairly strong balance sheet 
So let's jump into the valuation of General Mills. And as always, if you enjoy the content values being provided, smash the like button, hit the subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Margin of safety then 10%, we can see it is a buy up to $67. 15% we can see pretty much around the current trading price for General Mills. In terms of Wall Street and what they forecast, well, they see around 12% upside over the next 12 months. So they do believe it to be a buy, but it really comes down to the margin of safety that you are looking for. Personally, I would like to see a bit more of a margin of safety, even at 20%, around $60 to consider. 20 to 25, 56 to $60 would be a strong buy in my opinion. And then we would see the upside significantly higher. But it does come down to the investor, their thesis, whether or not this is one you would like for the long term. But the positive to note that we did see is they have been paying, again, the dividend without a reduction for more than 100 years. So something just to bear in mind. But as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The next company that we do have is BDX, Beckton, Dickinson and Company, again, trading towards the 52-week lows. We see the forward yield of 1.62% with a forward PE of 18 now, over the last 10 years, it has gone up around 118%, and we can see the all-time highs at around $287. So let's take a look. The dividend, very safe score, 91, 68 billion market cap, a large cap company. Key metrics will increase the dividend during the last recession, plus sales, so above average growth, which was negative, and also outperform the S&P with that negative 24% return. Now, they did recently increase the dividend 4.4% as well as 4% on average over the last five years. At a minimum, it is keeping up in line with inflation. But over the last 20 years, it has gone up 12%. And we would like to see those double digit increases come back to the company. They're also a dividend king. They have increased those dividends for the last 50 years or more. Now, dividend yield theory, we can see that sign of severe undervaluation, 1.61 versus 1.35, as well as the forward P at 18 versus the five-year average of 20. Now, when we look at the healthcare sector, P, it is significantly, in fact, no, it is in line, 18.3 versus 18.4. So let's take a look at the free cash flow payout. As always, below 60%. It did go slightly higher in 2022, but 2023 is 49%, as well as 2024 is expected 29% is very reassuring. And I would like to see if this year's essential free cash flow does hit around 29%, then a nice double digit increase for investors. Free cash flow per share, well, 565 to 739 inconsistent over the period it has gone up in 2021 quite significantly in fact doubled but it has come down the positive to note is 2024 they are expecting a very strong year to 13 dollars sales growth then pretty mixed we see some years or in fact a number of years of strong double digit growth to the top line 2023 at three percent was okay right at the bottom of the minimum that we do expect and numerically speaking, though, they have increased their top line by more than double from eight and a half billion to 19.4 shares outstanding. The first company we've come across where their net position is net dilution. So they have increased your shares as a shareholder over the last 10 years. Something just to consider. And this has been by around 100 million worth of shares. ROIC then around 10 percent or more is what i like to see it is one of those that has a slightly lower roic but it is consistent so something just to bear in mind as some people may not be attracted to companies with low rois and some it may not be a big issue operating margin positive 12 percent or thereabouts every single year and free cash flow margin very very strong 11 percent in 2023 Finally, the net debt to EBITDA, 2.21 in 2023 is positive. We do see it having quite a number of years above three, but right now it is below there. Something maybe just to keep an eye on, but so far the dividend looks to be safe, as well as a fairly strong balance sheet. Now let's jump into the valuation. Don't forget you can click on the pinned comment below to grab a copy of the valuation model to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio. 10% margin of safety, then it is a buy up to 248. At 15%, it is pretty much around the current trading price. So we see an acceptable buy at around 234, 235. Now, in terms of Wall Street, well, they expect some very strong upside, nearly 30% to $301, as we can see here. So a 15% margin of safety with around 28% upside over the 12 month period.
We then move on to a highly requested dividend stock. Now, this is one that I'll be honest, looks severely, severely undervalued. And let's get to it. It is Kering SA. Now, over the last year, it is down 33%. It is pretty much at that 52-week low with a yield of 3.72% and a P of 13.8. Now, when we take a look or quickly at that last 10 years, we can see it is up around 110%, not the prettiest looking graph, and it's all-time high summer 2021 of more than double the current trading price at $946. So let's take a look. Now, the market cap sits around $49 billion. It is a large cap company, and we can see some very, very strong growth, 17% over the last full year, 18% on average over the last five years, and over the last 20 years, 9%. So lots to like here for dividend growth investors. And when we take a look at the free cash flow payout, well, what do we see here? Below 60% for the large part over the more recent period. 2023 expected 64%, something I can live with, and I would like to see another double-digit dividend increase this year. Free cash flow share, very positive, in fact, $4.56 to $25.70. Now, it is expected to come down in 2023's annual report, but 2024 is expected to go right back up. So we can understand why that share price has started to drop slightly. Now, in terms of their sales growth, other than the fact that we see that COVID year of negative growth, we also see that in 2017. But for the large part, the other years seem to be some strong double-digit growth. 2022, 15%, although 2023, it is expected to drop down to 5%. So numerically speaking, it's gone from essentially 10 billion to 20 billion. So the top line has doubled over the last 10 years. Shares outstanding, pretty much they've only really bought back 3 million shares, so not much to say. It is pretty much flat over the period. ROIC, very nice to see. It is above 10% for the large part of the last 10 years, 20% for the last two years, 2023 again 19%. So there is a lot to like with these financial metrics, as well as one or two things to keep an eye on. The margin looks to be positive, well above that 16 cent minimum and in the high 20s over the more recent period. And free cash flow margin, again, very positive, especially over the more recent period, above that 7%, 2023 expected 9%. Finally, net debt to EBITDA below 3 over the more recent times, 1.95 in 2022, 2.25 in 2023, something just to keep an eye on. But so far, it looks like that balance sheet is strong, as well as a fairly decent dividend safety. So let's jump into the valuation of Kering stock. As always, if you enjoy the content, smash the like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so these videos drop to your doorstep on the daily basis. Now, intrinsic value at $595. As we can see, a margin of safety at 10%, it is a buy up to 535. 15%, it is still a buy. 20%, it is still a buy. So we can see this stock is significantly undervalued. And at 35%, it isn't quite there yet. So right now, we're estimating at a 30% margin of safety. Now, what are Wall Street forecasting over the next 12 months? As we can see, around 41% upside on this stock. Very, very strong. It is a very strong company as well. So there is a lot to like, a 30% margin of safety with upside of around 41%. Now, this is one that is traded essentially on the European Stock Exchange. But as always, let me know, especially for those investors who aren't European, whether or not this is one that does entice you. This is one that I will start to look to build a position this month. It does look to be incredibly undervalued and it has a strong brand, strong financial metrics. One or two that we did run through that I would say it is worth just keeping an eye on. But let me know. Are you adding to any of these six undervalued dividend stocks? As I've already run through all of mine, what I'm doing on each company, let me know. Have a great day. Don't forget, click on that pinned comment below if you want to grab a copy of the valuation model, getting to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies on your watch list or on your portfolio. Have a great day. Catch you all in the next one and take care.